Hey, how's it going everyone? This is Mr. Dale and today I want to talk to you guys about the material we covered in the live lesson, which is the ideas of comparative and absolute advantage. And these are really important terms in economics because they help us compare producers, what they are best at producing, and help them decide what to produce to be a better player in the global, global economy and be a more efficient trade partner. So for this lesson, what you will need is uh, the guided note taker, which I've posted in my Google Classroom, and I will also include a link in the description of this video. So make sure to snag that. You can either make a copy of it and follow along using your laptop or computer, or you can print it out and follow along by filling it in by hand. So go ahead and grab that now. And then we can go ahead and get started on the warm up. So, for this lesson, for the ideas of comparative and absolute advantage, we need to do a quick refresher on four big vocab terms uh, that we've covered earlier in the semester. And those four terms are opportunity cost, advantage, factors of production, and production possibilities curves. So, I'm going to encourage you to pause the video now and take a guess at what each of these four terms mean or what they are. See if you can think back to the definitions we talked about in class or if anything comes to mind. So go ahead and pause now. All right, I'll go ahead and assume that you've made your guesses. Let's go through these one by one. Starting with opportunity cost, a really big term in economics. In my class, we've referred to opportunity cost as the loss of potential gain from other alternatives when one alternative is selected. So when you are faced with a decision and you make a decision, what did you give up? What could you have done instead of the thing you're doing? And you might remember this little matrix here that we've used a few times in our class where we list two separate alternatives, say maybe going to college versus going straight into the workforce. And we list out the benefits of each, like if we just decide to go to college, we get that college experience. Or if we decide to go to work, we get to start earning money right away. We also list the benefits foregone, which usually lined up pretty closely with the benefits of the other alternative, right? If you go to college, you give up making money right away, which is the benefit of going straight into the workforce. The opportunity cost is the second best alternative, and it includes all of those benefits that you are giving up. So the opportunity cost of going to college in many cases would be uh, not being able to join the workforce right away and not making an income and having to take on debt. So all of those combined equate to the opportunity cost. Now, advantage is a little bit less economic and a little more general term, right? And most of you probably have a working definition of what an advantage is. It's a condition or circumstance that puts someone or some organization in a better position, in a superior or more favorable position, especially when compared to competitors. So I can think of no better example than our good friend Obi-Wan Kenobi here. As many of you probably know, I'm a big Star Wars fan, but for those of you that haven't seen all of the Star Wars movies, in Episode 3, one of our main characters, this guy right here, Obi-Wan Kenobi, finds himself in a duel with a, a former student, right? A situation I hope I'm never in. And he ultimately realizes that he has an advantage. He has gained the high ground, which in a lightsaber duel gives him a favorable or superior position over the person he is fighting. So the same term can really be applied to economics, whereas instead of a lightsaber duel, we're thinking about producing things. And we'll dive more into what those advantages look like when we get to comparable and absolute advantages. <clears throat> The next term is factors of production, and this is probably the most difficult one to, to recall, um, as it just includes a lot, right? There are four main components of the factors of production. So there's four different inputs that are combined to create products and services. Those are land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship. And you may even sometimes see a fifth one listed as technology, although we're not going to dive into that one for today. But if you did have that listed for your guest definition, that's great. That's also included as well. And this image here really helps us illustrate those four main factors of production. The first labor is represented by this gentleman here, right? Picking fruit on the farm. 
the second land is all of this area here where they're building their farm, where they're growing the fruit. The third is capital, and capital can actually take two forms. The first is what's known as human capital. That's the skills you're acquiring right now. It's the intangible skill sets that humans get through education or through experience that allow them to produce goods and services. The second type of capital is what's known as physical capital. That's tangible. You can actually hold that in your hands, right, or, or touch and feel and see it. That's represented by this tractor here. It could also be represented by the farm. It's tools, it's resources, it is things that we use to make other goods and services. And then of course, the last factor is entrepreneurship represented by this lady right here. Someone that combines the factors of production that takes on risk in an attempt to provide goods and services to an economy. And our last vocab term, is the production's possibilities curve. You've probably seen quite a few of these throughout this semester in my class. It's because it's a really important part of economics, especially at the macro level. So a production possibilities curve is a curve that illustrates the variations in the amounts that can be produced of two products if both depend on the same finite resource for their manufacture. So in this graph here, we're comparing the quantity of guns a producer or a country could produce relative to the amount of butter they could produce. So anything along the curve itself represents a what is known as maximum efficiency or the, the highest level of output they can achieve uh, with varying combinations of these two products. So point C, point D, and point B all along the curve are maximum efficiency. Point A to the left of the curve represents an inefficient level of output. At point D, this producer may be able to make say five guns and five tons of butter. At point A, they might only be making three guns and three tons of butter. They're making less than is theoretically possible. They could do more. And then last, we've got X lying out here to the right of the curve. Now remember, anything to the right of a production possibilities curve represents something that is impossible given the current level of possible output represented by the curve. The only way for this producer or this country to make X amount of guns and butters would be to shift the curve, which would require them to have some type of new technology implemented or to increase their labor, uh, their labor force or to have new resources available to them. Okay, so that covers us for the warm-up. We're now going to jump into the comparative advantage section of your note taker. So make sure you're following along at the big header that says comparative advantage. Comparative advantage in economics looks at the opportunity cost of two or more producers to make an additional unit specifically of the same kind. So if we take a quick look over at my graph to the left, we would be looking at the opportunity cost of both restaurant A and restaurant B to make say one more taco. What are they giving up to make one more taco? And we do that using these production possibilities curves. So in the event that one of these producers has a lower opportunity cost, they're giving up less than the other producer, they are said to have a comparative advantage. They have a comparative advantage in the production of tacos. One thing this does not measure is the total amount being produced. So it might be, and I will, we'll find out later, but it might be that restaurant B <coughs> does not have a comparative advantage, even though, or pardon me, um, restaurant A does not have a comparative advantage in producing tacos, even though they could produce more tacos overall. The ability to produce more tacos overall is what's called an absolute advantage, and we will take a look at that here in a second. But it is possible for someone to be able to produce more tacos than a competitor and still not have that comparative advantage. And the reason why this whole idea is so important is because it helps countries decide what to create in order to export and what types of goods and services they'll need to look to trade partners to import if they want to have as much stuff, the largest economy, as possible. It turns out that if a country has a comparative advantage in producing a good or service, if they were to focus production on that good or service and export it, export the excess, and import the things they gave up producing, they will end up with more stuff 
than they would have had if they just tried to produce all those things on their own. So if someone has a comparative advantage in making tacos, it would make sense for them to make extra tacos, export those extra tacos, and import burritos. And they will end up with more tacos and burritos, a higher combination of tacos and burritos, than was possible uh, if they had just tried to produce tacos and burritos on their own. So next up we have absolute advantage. And as I mentioned previously, absolute advantage is simply looking at, given the same amount of resources, who can produce more of a good or service? Who has the ability to produce the absolute largest quantity of a given good or service? So when a country is said to have an absolute advantage, in other terms, it means that they can produce more given the exact same amount of inputs. So that's the important part there. They have to be using the exact same amount of inputs. Now, when deciding what to specialize in, a country should not weigh absolute advantage. In my earlier example, we saw that country, a country that is producing tacos, if they focus on tacos, they can end up with more tacos and burritos, even though they didn't produce burritos themselves. Even if they could have produced more burritos than their competitor, it's because that comparative advantage is what we need to be focusing on when we decide what to specialize on and how to reach maximum efficiency working with trade partners. <clears throat> so let's do a little practice here using this graph. What I'm gonna challenge you guys to do is to reference the graph and see if you can't determine who has the absolute advantage, not comparative advantage, absolute advantage in producing video games. We'll start with video games. And in the graph, we have two producers with two production possibilities curve. We have Mario here, oh, sorry about that. Mario here, represented in red, this line right here. And it shows how many video games he can produce at absolute maximum, the theoretical maximum, and how many pairs of sunglasses, stunas, he can produce at the absolute maximum. Kanye is represented by blue, by this blue line right here. And we have to ask ourselves, what is the absolute maximum, the theoretical maximum he can produce when it comes to sun, sunglasses, shades? And what is the absolute maximum we compare to video games? And once we have the answer to those questions, it's a simple comparison, who can produce more of each of these two different products. So go ahead and pause the video, take a guess who can produce more video games and who can produce more sunglasses. Okay, I'll go ahead and assume you have paused the video. Let's take a look starting with video games. So again, we have to ask ourselves, what is the theoretical maximum amount of video games Mario can produce based on this production possibilities curve? Well, if we go along the x-axis, the farthest point is right here at six video games. The most amount of video games that Mario could produce is six. How does that compare to Kanye? Kanye, if we go along the x-axis, sees a theoretical maximum of two video games. Two is less than six, so it is said that Mario has the absolute advantage, the absolute advantage, because he can produce more than Kanye given the same inputs. Now, when we look at shades, we can see that exact same situation except in reverse. Kanye can produce six pairs of shades, whereas Mario can only produce two. And that means Kanye can produce more than Mario, a theoretical maximum higher than Mario's, giving him the absolute advantage. All right, guys, so that's the first section of practice. Let's go ahead and move into input and output tables. And these are gonna be really helpful for determining comparative advantage. We just looked at absolute advantage. Now we're gonna go and take a closer look at comparative advantage. Uh, we're not gonna focus too much on input tables, but we will take a deep look at output tables uh, during this video. What they essentially are are just ways to compare the required inputs for a producer or the, the theoretical maximum outputs for a producer and table form instead of graph form for people that like operating with numbers more instead of graphs. And again, this can be used to extrapolate what the opportunity cost is and help us figure out who has the comparative advantage. Because remember, comparative advantage is the idea that somebody has a lower opportunity cost than someone else in producing a good or service. So let's take a look at our example. <clears throat> Here we see an example output table that again is measuring how much these two producers could theoretically produce, what their maximum is. And this information is based off that same Kanye Mario graph we were just working with. 
So again, remember, this is the theoretical maximum they can produce, and we're going to be using this table to compare those production levels and ultimately determine opportunity cost. So if you're curious how I filled this in, I'll walk you through it. Let's start with Kanye. We wanted to ask the question, in terms of production of sunglasses, what is the absolute most Kanye can produce? Well, we look at his production possibilities curve and see that the highest point on the y-axis is this right here, six. So the most sunglasses Kanye can produce is six. And then we do the same thing for video games except along the x-axis, which is measuring how many video games he could produce. And we see the absolute maximum in terms of video games Kanye could produce is two. So we fill that in here. And then we do the same thing for Mario, seeing that he can produce two sunglasses at an absolute maximum and six video games at an absolute maximum. Now our output table is complete, and we can use this to start figuring out opportunity cost and continue working towards determining who has a comparative advantage. So let's go ahead and do that now. We've got our graph, we've got our output table, and we're going to spend some time filling in this table of opportunity cost, figuring out what the opportunity cost is for Kanye to produce a pair of sunglasses. What is he giving up to produce a pair of sunglasses? What is he giving up to produce video games? And we'll ask those same questions for Mario. So I'm gonna go ahead and ask you guys to take a moment See if you can't figure out what Kanye is giving up every time he produces a pair of sunglasses by pausing the video and just working through what you have in this graph and what you have in this output table. And uh, give it a minute. If you don't get there, that's fine. I'm going to walk you through it afterwards, but I'm just curious to see how you guys can do um, prior to me kind of walking you through step by step. Okay. I will assume you guys were able to pause the video and at least think a little bit on it. Um, let's see if you did come up with an answer, how close you were. And if you didn't come up with an answer, I haven't taught you how to do it yet. So no worries. I'm going to walk you through it right now. So again, the question is, what is Kanye giving up every time he produces a pair of sunglasses? I'm a big visual guy. So let's work with the graph first. Kanye, let's say he is producing two video games, okay? Two video games. He's right here at the uh, the point of two, or, uh, yeah, two, two comma zero, right? Two video games. And he decides, hey, I'm going to start producing sunglasses. So he moves from producing two video games to one video game and shifts all of that production towards, um, towards stunner shades, towards sunglasses. How many pairs of sunglasses, if he is working at maximum efficiency, would he produce? Well, let's take a look. He's now here at one video game, moved everything along to sunglasses, and we move up the y-axis to three pairs of sunglasses. So we can confidently say for every one video game that is given up, Kanye can produce three pairs of sunglasses. But the question isn't how many pairs of sunglasses is he getting for giving up one video game? The question is how many, uh, how much, pardon me, what specifically is he giving up to produce one pair of sunglasses? So the way we'd want to say this is he is giving up one third of a video game for one pair of sunglasses. You guys see that connection? If giving up one full pair or one full video game gives him three pairs of sunglasses, for every time he gives up a third of a pair of sunglasses, like he did here, he is gaining one, or pardon me, every time he gives up a third of a video game, he is gaining one pair of sunglasses, right? We go from two to one and two thirds, he gets that one pair of sunglasses. We go from one and two thirds video games to one and one third video game, he now has two sunglasses. We go from one and one third video game to one video game, he now has three sunglasses. So every time he makes a pair of sunglasses, his opportunity cost is one third of a video game. Make sense? Some of you may prefer to do this numerically, which is also possible. Um, if you're not a visual person or this isn't quite connecting, the next place we can look is the output table that we just filled out. We know that the theoretical maximum Kanye can produce is six pairs of sunglasses, and the theoretical maximum that he can produce in video games is two. So all we need to do in order to figure out his opportunity cost for sunglasses is to divide the alternative video games buy sunglasses. That gives us two over six, and when we simplify that, that gives us one third of a video game. Okay, let's go ahead and take a moment to try the second section here. We're going to stay with Kanye, but now instead of asking what the opportunity cost of sunglasses is, we're going to ask what the opportunity cost of for Kanye to produce video games is. 
So go ahead and pause the video, see if you can't work through it now, and then we will go through an example when you get back. All right, hopefully you've got some kind of answer down after you pause the video. So again, we're asking the question, what is the opportunity cost for Kanye to produce video games when compared to sunglasses? So again, we can do this in graphical form, but instead of starting here, assuming he's producing two video games, we're gonna start over here and say, theoretically, let's say he's already operating at six sunglasses. That's all he's producing in his little economy. When he goes from six sunglasses to five sunglasses, how much did he give up? Or pardon me, um, when he goes from zero video games to one video games, rather, how much did he give up expressed in terms of sunglasses? So we can take a look. In order to produce one video game, going from here at six sunglasses, zero video games, to one video game, we have to come down here until we see that intersection. We see it at three sunglasses. So to move one point or one video game to the right, he has to come down in his production by three sunglasses. So the opportunity cost of video games for Kanye is three sunglasses. And then again, you can do that exact same thing over here, dividing sunglasses by video games, which is six over two. And when you simplify that, that's three. Three sunglasses were given up. So if we were to do the same thing for Mario, we would calculate that he is giving up three video games every time he tries to, every time he produces a pair of sunglasses. We can see that here, right? He is producing six video games. He wants to move up to one pair of sunglasses. So what does that slope look like? Well, he moves over one, two, three video games. He goes down three video games to go up one pair of sunglasses. So he gave up three video games for each pair of sunglasses. And then on the video game side, if he was producing two pairs of shades, how much did he give up in order to produce one video game? Well, we can see that if we go uh, try to go down one, or pardon me, uh, try to go over one, we go down about a third, and when we find that closest intersection, we'll see that every time he gives up a pair of sunglasses, he's gaining three video games, which means he's giving up a third of a pair of sunglasses per video game. Okay, so now that we have our opportunity cost outline, we were able to say, what the maximum uh, theoretical limit for producing each was, calculate opportunity cost based off that and the graph. We're capable of answering who has a comparative advantage in each of these two products. So again, the question needs to be, what, what producer is giving up less in order to produce a given good or service? Let's start with sunglasses. Who is giving up less every time they produce a pair of sunglasses? Well, Mario is giving up three video games Kanye's only giving up a third of a video game. So who's giving up more? Who's giving up more? If you guess that Kanye is giving up less, you are correct. Mario is giving up more. And since Kanye is giving up less, that means he has a comparative advantage when it comes to the production of sunglasses. What about video games? Well, if you said that Mario is only giving up a third of a pair of sunglasses and Kanye is giving up three sunglasses, which is significantly more, nine times more, and you were able to argue that Mario has the comparative advantage in video games, you'd be correct. Mario is giving up less, meaning he has the comparative advantage in producing video games. Okay, I hope this was helpful, guys. You should have been able to follow along on the note taker. I've got some spots for practice and I might post some practice problems to Google Classroom later. Otherwise, the quiz will be up here shortly. And if you have any questions or concerns, you are always more than welcome to reach out to me via email and I'd be happy to help. Thanks so much, guys. Have a great day.